This lecture is about gallbladder diseases and related disorders by Dr. Hisham al Akkad, Professor of General Surgery, Ain Shams Medical School. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify and describe the types of gallstones, differentiate between gallbladder diseases themselves and with other diseases of similar presentations clinically and by investigations. Prioritize investigations for verifying the diagnosis. Set a plan of management for common presentations of gallbladder disease and explain how complications occur and how to diagnose and manage. Goldstones are the most common biliary pathology and is very prevalent in the society as you can see. In Egypt, we expect persons with gold bladder stones to be 10 to 15 million. Only 20% of those patients are symptomatic. But among the 80% asymptomatic patients, 1 to 2% will become symptomatic each year. Only symptomatic patients need cholecystectomy, with few exceptions. Etiology and types. Goldstones can be divided into three main types, cholesterol, pigment, and mixed stones. Cholesterol stones are relatively more common in the Western countries, although only 10 to 20 percent, but are very rare in Egypt and other Eastern countries. Cholesterol nucleates to form a stone when its concentration relative to phospholipids and bile acids increases. Once a cholesterol nucleus forms, more and more cholesterol deposit on the surface and the stone grows. Therefore, cholesterol stones are large and few in number, usually as one or two stones. Dissolution medical therapy with drugs taken for several months was therefore tried in the West, but even there this policy was abandoned in favor of cholecystectomy. This therapy was marginally beneficial only in pure cholesterol stones. Pigment stones are composed of bilirubin pigments and are either black or brown. These stones comprise the majority of stones in the Far East. Black stones contain no cholesterol and therefore are pure pigment stones. Their presence, especially in children and teens, must raise the suspicion of a congenital hemolytic disease. Brown stones resemble mixed stones in the fact that they contain cholesterol in addition to the pigment and are associated with bacteria. They are different in the fact that the cholesterol content is less than 30%. They are small, multiple, dark brown, rather of equal size, and shiny. Like in the West, mixed stones comprise the majority of stones in Egypt, but with few cholesterol. Mixed are yellow to brown and are characteristically hard and faceted. They are variable in size, but the largest stones rarely exceed 2 cm. Radio-opaque stones belong to this type, but still only 10% are sold. As you can see, obesity, high calorie diets, certain medications can increase the secretion of cholesterol and supersaturate the bile, increasing the, the lithogenicity of bile. Abnormal emptying of the gold bladder may promote the aggregation of nucleated cholesterol crystals. Presentation. Patients typically complain of right upper quadrant or epigastric pain, which may radiate to the back and is dull and constant. It might follow heavy meals, especially if fatty, and after prolonged fasting. Dyspepsia, flatulence, food intolerance, particularly to fats and some alteration in bowel frequency, if persistent or recurrent, necessitates doing ultrasonography before assuming colonic dyspepsia. 
Severe colicky pain at right upper quadrant may be associated with nausea and vomiting. Pain may, may radiate to the chest and in this case angina should be ruled out. Colic may last for minutes or even several hours and the patient may refer to the ER for systemic antispasmodics. Repeated attacks, especially if becoming frequent, should hasten cholecystectomy to avoid pending complications. Although the first presentation could be a complication, meticulous history usually reveals long-standing dyspeptic symptoms or pain, which were either neglected or attributed to other causes like spastic colon or maldigestion. A stone may impact at the neck of the gallbladder, which together with edema of mucosa due to inflammation might obstruct bile evacuation from the gallbladder. Acute inflammation due to bacterial proliferation occurs. There will be a positive Murphy's sign with leukocytosis and moderately elevated liver function tests. A mass may be palpable as the omentum and adjacent organs adhere to the gallbladder. If the stone dislodges, as in most cases, the acute inflammation usually resolves with conservative treatment. Otherwise, the gallbladder becomes filled with pus and its wall is thickened by the edema and inflammatory reaction, a condition known as empyema of the gallbladder. Later, the wall may become necrotic and perforate usually with the development of localized peritonitis, because by that time, adhesions have sealed the area from the rest of the peritoneum. Pus trickling along the right paracolic gutter may cause symptoms and signs resembling acute appendicitis. If the impacted stone has caused cystic duct obstruction, but with initially minimal inflammation, the bile inside the gallbladder may be absorbed and replaced by mucus secreted from the mucosa, a condition known as mucosal of the gallbladder. Other complications include obstructive jaundice. One or more stones may pass from the gallbladder to the common bile duct through the cystic duct. The smaller the stones, the higher the risk. The first stone pushes down through the cystic duct, causing it to dilate till entering the common bile duct. The stone then reaches down to the narrowest part of the common bile duct at the sphincter of Odi at the duodenal papilla. If the stone impacts in the papilla, it will cause obstructive jaundice associated with acute severe colicky pain, because unlike the rest of the CBD, the sphincter contains smooth muscle. The stone may disimpact backwards into the CBD or pass through into the duodenum with the relief of pain and jaundice. If the stone remained in the CBD, intermittent attacks occur and the CBD must be cleared urgently. Repeated trauma by stone passage through the duodenal papilla may cause benign stricturing at the lower end of CBD. Another important complication is acute cholangitis. The presence of foreign body like stone in the CBD predisposes to acute cholangitis. Bile in the biliary tree becomes infected and unless urgently drained, toxemia and septicemia shall follow with septic shock and high risk of mortality. Acute pancreatitis might occur. The CBD stone precipitates acute pancreatitis, which is a known entity. Although the exact mechanism is ill-defined, one theory is the obstruction of the pancreatic duct by stone in the common channel or reflux of bile into the pancreatic duct. Nevertheless, ERCP sphincterotomy with CBD stone clearance might improve the condition. The differential diagnosis of acute right upper abdominal and epigastric pain includes active or perforated peptic duodenal ulcer. With perforation, a plain x-ray abdomen in erect position or a plain x-ray chest will show a rim of air below the diaphragm on the right side and later bilaterally. If the acute symptoms are only few hours, the film may not show the air leak 
and has to be repeated after another six hours or so. Occasionally, the air is detected earlier during doing the ultrasonography before appearing in the plain x-rays. Like acute cholecystitis, acute pancreatitis is also a complication of biliary calculi. Therefore, in presence of gallstones, the acute symptoms must be known to be related to which complication. Ultrasonography is an adequate radiology modality in diagnosing acute cholecystitis. Serum amylase is elevated initially in both acute cholecystitis and acute pancreatitis. However, it continues to rise to levels exceeding 500 units per liter with pancreatitis, and serum lipase is more specific to pancreatitis. CT or MRI are superior to ultrasonography for diagnosing pancreatitis and so are often requested to verify the diagnosis and assess its severity. Another complications include acute appendicitis and others. The diagnosis of chronic cholecystitis is confirmed by ultrasonography. Clinical examination is normal unless an associated disease is present. Peptic ulcers or erosions, reflux esophagitis or inflammatory bowel disease are commonly associated with gallbladder disease. So gastric and colonic symptoms must be sought in the history rather than attributing all complaints to the gallstones. Further investigations may be done to rule out these diseases like upper endoscopy. Gallbladder stones as seen by ultrasound, whether newly discovered or previously diagnosed, if associated with recent constant pain at right upper quadrant with fever and anorexia or vomiting, strongly points to acute cholecystitis. Abdominal examination ranges from positive Murphy's sign palpable mass to frank generalized peritonitis in few cases. Scintigraphy has been largely substituted for by ultrasonography in diagnosing acute cholecystitis. Ultrasonographic signs include thickened wall of gallbladder, which might contain gas, pericystic collection, and a mass of adjacent dilated bowel loops and omentum. Differential diagnosis of acute cholecystitis entails in most cases to add an erect plane x-ray abdomen for perforated duodenal ulcer and CT with contrast to rule out acute pancreatitis. If a palpable gallbladder mass is non-tender or showing only mild tenderness, acute cholecystitis is unlikely. If jaundice is also present, then the possibility of ampullary or pancreatic head cancer is high. CT, MRCP, or ERCP are usually ordered in such conditions. If the non-tender enlarged gallbladder is not associated with jaundice, a mucosyl is suspected. Gallbladder carcinoma, although rare, is another possibility. Symptomatic chronic calcular cholecystitis is treated by cholecystectomy in most cases. The operation is done laparoscopically, except if contraindicated. Operation is done not only to relieve symptoms, but to prevent possible complications. With associated disease like gastroesophageal reflux, the patient must be warned that some of the symptoms like heartburn may persist after surgery and shall need dietary restrictions and occasional medications. In absence of such diseases, the patient does not need any dietary restrictions after cholecystectomy, including fats in little amounts. However, in some patients with mild to moderate symptoms, the symptoms are controlled medically without surgery, either due to high risk of surgery or due to limited symptomatic relief. These patients include cirrhotics, patients with poor cardiac or respiratory functions, and the very old. For an acute cholecystitis, 
of five days or less. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy can be done, but the conversion rate to open cholecystectomy is higher than if chronic. Cholecystectomy done later is difficult because the surrounding tissues become strongly adherent, are edematous, friable, and bleed easily due to hyperemia. The risk of injury to important structures is high. Initial conservative treatment is safe choice till acute inflammation subsides. Most patients respond, but some may progress to empyema, gangrene, and even perforation. Cholecystectomy, whether percutaneous or open, will be needed. Cholecystectomy can be done three to six weeks later, usually by open method. Asymptomatic, accidentally discovered goldstones usually need no treatment. Conservative treatment includes NPO, intravenous fluid administration, administration of analgesics, administration of antibiotics. If vomiting is present, a nasogastric tube should be inserted initially. When fever, pain, anorexia, and abdominal signs improve, gradual resumption of diet by oral fluids, then soft diet, then light meals can be done. The patient may then be discharged on oral medications and small fat-free meals till scheduled for cholecystectomy three to six weeks later. Some protocols would operate during same hospital admission just after improvement. This is not the routine in most institutions. There are few exceptions to operate on asymptomatic gallbladder stones. Immune compromised patients and diabetics shall ultimately develop acute inflammation, which can rapidly progress to empyema and gangrene with grave consequences. Cholecystectomy is done as prophylaxis against those anticipated serious complications. Hemolytic anemia shall result in continual formation of pigment stones and obesity surgery enhances stone formation. This is the end of part one. We continue in part two.